Thank you for tuning in, everyone. I'm your host, Conrad, on Wednesday Night Reviews. And from superheroes to average Joes, here's what I read this week. So I finished up my copy of Weavers, written by Simon Spurrier, drawn by Dylan Burnett, and colored by Triona Farrell, published by Boom Studios. This odd superhero noir crime thriller is totally off the wall. It was not anything I was expecting. And it basically does that exact same thing to the protagonist, Sid Time, who is just in the wrong place at the wrong time. He's trying to get a beer, he's walking to his bar, and suddenly the thing blows up in his face. And before he knows it, a glowing, disgusting spider jumps down his throat, giving him superpowers, but also psychically connecting him to a crime family. Now, if that isn't the craziest way to get a superpower, I don't know what is. And frankly, Sid just rolls with it, because why not? That and, you know, they'll kill him if he doesn't. Now, the coolest part is the powers. So he gets, in his iteration of it, his particular set of power, that spider that gets him, he gets to have energy blasts, he can summon forth from his body biological material like it becomes like claws or whatever he might need tentacles uh you know whatever the downside to this power is it isn't psychically linking him to another member of the crime family this spider is living in his brain basically it's in his mind and he hears it talking to him and these things hate dishonesty any sort of deception and they communicate to their brethren, and there's a bunch of them within their family or their tribe, and they all talk to the other members of this tribe and the humans that they control. And so they can tell you when someone's lying to you, especially if there's a weaver in them, and they can go through and turn these family members on you. Now, Sid, of course, is only in this crime family because of this spider, and all of a sudden he's got to play by their rules, the spiders, and the family's rules. To make matter worse, everyone is suspicious of them, as they should be, because he's got no past with them. They don't know this guy. And all he's trying to do is basically make it to the end of the day. Now, because of the spider that has inhabited him, it gives him a lot of power. He's also now replacing one of the heavy hitters within the family so he has to fill that role and all of a sudden he's got people over his shoulder constantly and where the story goes from there is off the wall it becomes this really interesting thriller where you don't know who's doing what there's betrayal there's all sorts of crazy leads and finally a beautiful twist at the end that just you do not see coming and it hits you and you're like just whoa because it shouldn't be able to work, but it does in the coolest way. And of course, Cy Spurrier just handles that wonderfully. Now, the art by Dylan Burnett in this book is wild. So I've already showed you this lovely giant spider crawling out of someone's throat. And it only goes up from there. The first page, though, is truly probably the best example I can give you. So, as I said, this is a crime noir. It is a very dark book uses a lot of shadows and black ink to represent those shadows, not just darker versions of the color on the wall, for instance. But every other color pops because of how dark the blacks are. So all the lights, uh, the colors and clothes, it, it really does just jump off the page at you. And specifically, when you see the weavers, their eyes there tend to glow like crazy, especially that character... And throughout the book, that style of coloring is consistent. And the drawings themselves, the illustrations, are very fluid. They don't have a sense of being made of stone, or they're not rock. They don't look like they are solid, constant things. Instead, the whole world has this fluid, bending notion about it. Well, that might be a bit graphic. Where every character... Some in the day at the bar there, well, at night, but in light in the bar, others peering onward. There's this otherworldliness to them, not just because of their powers, but the way that they're drawn, the way that they're shown, they are all very unique, very distinct characters. 
and also the depictions of their bodies, the way they move, the way they hold themselves, all these crime family members, it lends itself to the story because Sid Time does not feel like there's any sort of constant in his life other than this thing yelling at him in his head. And that really comes through in Dylan Burnett's art and the colorist's work as well. And beyond just, you know, figures and, and things like that, the way that Spurrier sets up specific angles to look at through panels, through pages, through the way that pages can be set up beyond just, you know, some sort of grid, as you can see here, just by playing with the design of panels, the panels themselves become art, and I think Dylan Burnett really works well with that to help create this world. With great power comes great responsibility is easily one of the biggest lines in comics and pop culture, and it's of course attributed to Spider-Man, a person who is bitten by a radioactive spider and gains powers, and he has to choose what to do with them. Sid Time does not get that choice, and in fact, he's basically forced into this life, not only through power, but how he must interact with these people and due to this power being forced upon him he must make a lot of choices just to try and survive and he must live within the rules of this family that he finds himself forced into which is very interestingly makes him opposite to spider-man or peter parker but it also shows that he too must make these choices and i think this book is a wonderful look at what we do with not only our abilities or our our gifts but also with the people that we find ourselves linked to whether it be socially by biology or any other way and i think that's what simon spurrier has really grasped onto in this book not to mention a cool superhero story all right everyone so this has been our review of weavers and here on Wednesday Night Reviews, we've come up with a new rating system out of five stars. So one star will be awarded for consistent art. A second star is going to be awarded for consistent writing. A third star will be awarded when the art and the writing work together to help push the story even further than just the writing or art alone could do. A fourth star will be awarded when the writing, the art, and the book works together well enough that I just can't put it down. If it is so good that I'm not able to just go, I need to finish this later. Four stars. And a fifth star is awarded to any book that can do all of those things, plus make me think about the book and take something out. Some idea, maybe a philosophical thought, or just a life thought, some sort of lesson that I can carry with me. And Weavers here is going to get a full four stars. It is highly consistent art that is crazy, off the wall, colored well, and fits the story. It's got great writing by Simon Spurrier, where the characters are interesting and unique. Those two factors come together so well to earn three stars, and of course, four stars because this book is fabulous, and I pretty well sat down and read the whole thing, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. So guys, absolutely check out Weavers. You can contact your local comic book shops. They very well might have a copy that you can order for curbside pickup. If not... You can have them order it. Usually takes one to two weeks, and then they can have them in for you. And of course, guys, please be sure to leave a comment down below. Hit that like button and subscribe for more. And we'll see you next time.